In creative writing, there's such a term as hero's journey. Every hero in humankind's history falls under the description. Every hero, from Jesus Christ to Terminator, walked their own path. No one said that the path will be easy, but no one says it should be walked alone. Friends and partners are vital for any hero. Good afternoon, this is Henry Keane on UATV English, giving you the hard truth, as always, in easy terms, directly from Ukraine. The EU countries agreed on a four-year financial assistance package for Ukraine amounting to 50 billion euro. The Allies provide Ukraine with vital assistance that ensures the stability of our state in the face of Russia's full-scale aggression. Despite the tense discussions, all 27 EU countries were able to reach an agreement. European unity once again passed the test. The Kremlin cannot wait for the Allies to abandon their assistance to Ukraine, but it is not Ukraine they are actually assisting, they are assisting themselves. Facing a brutal thug of Russia breaking into European house, Europe wants no butcher. This is why they are helping Kiev. And today, Kiev can firmly count on an increase in the supply of artillery shells, as production raises for more than one million per year. Moreover, this week, the first meeting of the NATO-Ukraine Council at the level of foreign ministers was held in Brussels. The NATO-Ukraine Council, created at this year's Vilnius Summit of the Alliance, is revealing its potential right now. During the meeting, an ambitious working program of cooperation for 2024 was approved, aimed at preparing Ukraine for NATO membership. The Allies finally provided Ukraine with recommendations on the priority forms necessary for Ukraine to achieve full interoperability with the Alliance. The armed forces of Ukraine de facto becomes a NATO army force. Allies agree that Ukraine will become a member of NATO. We have now provided recommendations on Ukraine's priority reforms, including the fight against corruption, strengthening the rule of law, and supporting uh, human rights and minority rights. Ukraine is closer to NATO than ever before. We will continue to support them on the path to membership and will continue to support Ukraine's fight for freedom. On my way to the meeting room today, journalists asked me about war fatigue mm. and about uh, my concerns about uh, regarding the continuation of the support to Ukraine. And uh, when I was walking out of the meeting, I can uh, clear, I wish I could uh, tell journalists what I heard in the room, mm. but since our meetings are confidential, we will keep it with ourselves. But if I am to sum up this the meeting that we had today, there was uh, a clear no to fatigue mm. and a clear yes to continued and increased support. Projects are being developed for humanitarian demand. Medical rehabilitation of wounded Ukrainian military, increasing the defense and industrial potential of Ukraine based on a strategic review of defense procurement. NATO countries are ready to unite their defense and industrial complexes to make the alliance even more effective, in particular in helping Ukraine. It is so good to feel that our country belongs to the Euro-Atlantic community. I don't know whether Ukraine should thank Comrade Putin and his delusions for us becoming stronger and closer to NATO and EU, Maybe someday we will, when indicted Russian Tsar delivered to The Hague. Maybe. The IT Coalition is yet another collective initiative within the framework of Rammstein, in addition to the already existing ones, artillery, tank and aviation. The IT Coalition, led by Estonia and Luxembourg, has united countries that have extensive experience in the field of cybersecurity. Belgium, Denmark, Latvia, Lithuania have joined already. Iceland will soon join the party and we are pleased to welcome other countries in. Russian hackers are doing their best worst, trying to break, I mean, you name it, almost everything. Our energy system, government servers, constantly producing new malware, using quite modern tech, just by the way. Ukraine can achieve superiority over the enemy only through asymmetric actions based on technological innovation and teamwork. 
Technology will win the war. The Russian can mobilize millions for meat assaults, and their factories across the Urals work in three shifts. But our advantage will be ensured by asymmetric responses, and they are possible thanks to innovations that are already working. We invent technologies, test them, scale them, and with your help, we will be able to do it faster and more. Rustem Umerov, Minister of Defense of Ukraine, in his address to participants of the IT coalition. As Russia is under sanctions and new technologies are more difficult to get for it, we can and should use the momentum to win. In modern hybrid war, all the battles are important and nobody knows which attack exactly will be the last to lead to victory. The new IT coalition will provide the necessary digital foundation to support the deployment of new tech solutions in Ukraine. In fact, Ukraine has already become a battleground for testing the world's advanced military technologies. What can I say? The sign of times, indeed. Ukrainians made their existential choice back in 1991 and will not allow anyone to drag them back to the colonial past. On December 1, 1991, an all-Ukrainian referendum was held on the Act of Declaration of Independence of Ukraine. 32 years ago, Ukrainians anonymously supported the path of development of Ukraine as an independent state. It was a true democratic lawful referendum, the results of which were recognized by the whole world. Residents of the regions that Russia is trying to annex now, back then, also voted for the independence of Ukraine. You only look at that. Sevastopol almost 64%, Crimea 67.5%, Donetsk Oblast more than 76%, Luhansk Oblast, Zaporizhia Oblast, Kherson Oblast more than 80%. Unlike the old Ukrainian referendum of 1991, the pseudo referendum periodically thrown by the Kremlin from 2014 to 2022 years in the temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine are illegal and thus invalid for a bunch of obvious reasons. Russia on the Ukrainian homeland has no rights at all. This are nothing but acts of violence, not expression of will. Only the Kremlin will, maybe. So this is why 32 million Ukrainians took part in the referendum of the year 1991. It was more than 84% of the population of Ukraine. Of them, almost 29 million, more than 90% of voters, voted pro. No matter how much the enemy wants to subdue us, it will not succeed. Because as in 1991, so in 2023, the Ukrainian people aspire to live in a free and independent country, the name of which is Ukraine. And no Russian propaganda, no Russian missile can break that. Not able to break our nation and our statehood. When the entire Ukrainian powerful and free people say glory to Ukraine, with these words our brave soldiers, defenders are liberating Ukrainian lands. With these words the blue yellow flag is raised on the liberation territories and Ukraine will live with these words free and independent because it is our choice. Ruslan Stefanchuk, chairman of the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine on Facebook. So Ukraine became independent 32 years ago and home too belongs the Crimea Peninsula was not a question back then. However, in 32 years of massive venomous Russian propaganda, of course, it sadly is not the case. So today, frequent, false, barbaric and chauvinistic statements of Russian officials and propagandists are nothing new to the world and Ukraine. The idea is not to hear what Russia says, dear world, but to look at what it does, really. So to always remember what Russia is, please remember Bucha. And stand for Ukraine as it is standing for you now, believe it or not. It was me, Henry Keane, on UA TV English, hoping to give you the hard truth in easy enough terms on our daily wrap-up today. Please comment, like and subscribe. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Your opinion matters a lot to us. Please stay safe and tune for more Ready Tomorrow. See you soon.